Hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. So today's very exciting. It's my first proper kind of like collab video with another YouTuber. So I interview um, a girl called Deanna about her experience as an exchange student in America and just living and working there. So yeah, if that's something you're interested in, then just stay tuned. <laughs> Oh, thanks so much for joining. Maybe just start by like introducing yourself in case people they don't they don't know who you are or they haven't um, seen your videos. Yeah, my name's Deanna. My YouTube is Deanna Haley. Just yeah, only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I started off making exchange videos and then travel videos and then now I'm just doing a bit of everything. So that's me. Yeah. Cool. So I've watched like lots of your videos, so I kind of already know, but just in Thank case don't like um when and where did you do your exchange so i did my exchange in a town called grass valley so it's up in northern california kind of near like tahoe okay. so that's where i was a very small town and when did you go like um time? i did my exchange in 2015 2016 so i left in august of 2015 and i finished in june of 2016 okay cool. so you did like the full um academic year yeah, yeah, the full 10 months. Cool. So um, you got to choose your state as well, right? Yeah, so when I did it, my I went through STS and they had an option where you could pay an extra fee and pick your top three states. So I put down my top three as California, Washington and Oregon. And then they just like offer you out to those states first. And then someone from California picked me. So I was very lucky because it was my top state. Yeah, sweet. So yeah, so like... Why did you choose um, America and like specifically California? Um, growing up, I'd always been like kind of obsessed with America, like watching American TV shows. I just really loved the idea of American school and how they have like lockers and get to wear regular clothes. Like I'd always had a uniform at school. Um, and yeah, I just really liked the idea of it just from watching it on like Disney Channel and stuff. So that's like mainly the reason why I wanted to go and then also I'm really into acting and LA oh, right. um, California in general is really good for acting so I wanted to just kind of like experience being in that um, kind of state see if it's somewhere I'd like to continue being in the future okay <laughs> cool so um yeah like so coming off that I guess so what was school like in America like is it kind of like the movies or <laughs> yeah my school um in a lot of ways, it's the exact same as the movies. Like, they, you have the cheerleaders who wear the chair outfits oh, on, yeah. like, game days. And you have, the, like, the jocks. And the cheerleaders date the jocks. And there was one um, <laughs> guy in one of my classes who was a jock. And he just got his cheerleader girlfriend pregnant. So it's, like, <laughs> very much like the cliches. And then, in some ways, it wasn't, like, my school. Instead of having, like, everybody ate at the cafeteria, probably, like, half of my school would bring their own lunches and they ate outside because we had kind of an indoor outdoor school all right. but in like a lot of american tv shows and movies it's like all inside and everybody eats at the cafeteria and nobody brings their own food so yeah some ways it was the same some ways it was different yeah so like you had already finished um school in new zealand right by the time you went there you still have to like do the tests and like exams and stuff when you were there yeah so I went halfway through year 13, so I'd already um, gone after credits to graduate early. So I didn't have to do super well in America because you know, either way, your American grades don't count for anything back home. Um, so you, if you leave and come back like in year 11 or something, you're going to have to repeat everything. But yeah, because I had let, like finished already, um, I didn't have to really pick subjects that would mean I didn't forget what I was doing back home so I could just do like dance and drama and yeah, right, right. psychology and like stuff that I like yeah, would yeah. enjoy the whole time yeah so I didn't have to worry about doing like maths and English and stuff but um no you still have to maintain a C average even okay. when they doesn't mean anything you just you have to keep doing your classwork <laughs> and they give you so much homework in America oh, really? <laughs> yeah we have like the textbooks that you see on tv shows um, I literally had those. I only took one academic class as well, just psychology. And every night we had to rewrite out the whole chapter from that day and like put it in our own words. And it was so much just from that one class. So I, if I had had to take English and history and like all those other ones, it would have been way too much. And I started off taking English, but because um, the only classes that 
the only senior English class that I could get put in was a like I can't think of the word right now but yeah the only English class that had space was at a like way lower level than what I was doing in New Zealand so I was in it for a little bit and then the teacher was just like why are you even in here like they, she was getting me to mark other people's like essays and stuff and so I was like there's no point and I just transferred out and did another dance subject so yeah that's like the opposite of me because I went to Italy and like I didn't speak any Italian so I literally just sat in class like <laughs> being bored the whole time mm -hmm. like I didn't yeah did you have um, to maintain grades or they were more lenient no, on like, it? I literally didn't do any of their tests because it was like way too hard because yeah mm -hmm. like, I didn't speak any Italian so anyway so like I know you talked about kind of having like a really good um host family right mm -hmm. um, but like did you still have that awkward like you know phase when you like um first moved there and you're kind of like um you know <laughs> is it kind of weird like just moving in with strangers in a way yeah. I think it's definitely easier like for me because I was going to an English-speaking country I can see how it would be so much harder if I didn't speak the language but there's always I guess that kind of awkwardness because you are just careful around them like when you first get there you don't want to do anything to like make them think why like <laughs> yeah you don't want them to be like oh we shouldn't have got her yeah. so you you're really careful to begin with and then you start to like pick up on how they joke around and like what's okay to do around them so yeah, yeah for a little know. bit but they were super super nice from the start so we got along really well and then eventually we were able to just act like family true um did you did you have host sisters or yeah I had one she's like my best friend now still oh. we talk like every day and yeah so she was a junior when oh, I you guys was were in the same school yeah we went to the same school but we weren't in the same grade that really helps um because like yeah introduce you to like her friends and stuff so yeah well we had a lot of the same kind of friends because we were both doing dance classes so we had like the same kind of people around us um we're just at different levels and then also um we kind of had some like ready made friends already because there were another like five exchange students in my area that all went to the same school as well so we all like yeah so we all met up before we started school and we hung out and so we already like knew each other so that's kind of what we did at the start of the year we all kind of stayed together throughout but would like go off whenever we yeah. wanted to hang with other people too. I guess like America's kind of similar like when you compare it to other countries but what like were there anything that really shocked you or like what are the biggest differences? Um, I think it's mainly like in New Zealand we have a lot of like random words or like just like dialect things that they just oh, did yeah. not understand. Like so <laughs> yeah. yeah even some of it that's like from Britain because our English is way closer to the UK like and then America, it's like, yeah they're like a whole new things and even the accent so when I I remember when I went there I like put on a load of washing and I went to like hang up my clothes and I asked my host sister if she had any pegs and it took so long because she was like what what are pegs yeah. like pigs, like farm animal and I was like no like to hang your clothes what are they called she, pigs? Like, clothes pins oh right right okay and so yeah and every time I would get <laughs> laughed at so often even at school because I was taking all these classes like drama and stuff where you're just like talking all the time compared to just sitting at a desk learning so everyone would constantly pull me out on things that I was saying they were like oh, what does that mean or they just laugh at my accent but it was all like they all loved it so like in a good it was being mean yeah they would be like that's the cutest thing ever and I was like shut up <laughs> yeah okay so okay I'm also kind of wondering because like a lot of exchange students kind of do it for the travel Right, so um, were you able to go to any other states or any other countries while you were there? Yeah, so um, I think the first time I went out of state was with my drama class. We did a trip up to Oregon. I oh, know it was, yeah, up to Oregon for a Shakespeare festival. So I went up there with some of my classmates and that was really cool because it was an overnight one. We got to all hang out in like a hotel and everything. And then um, I think there was a couple other trips with like, my dance classes and stuff where we went out of state and just hung out so that was cool and then with my host family the I'm trying to think we did two trips I'm trying to remember what the first one was I don't know why I can't remember it um I think it was just like around California we went to like the Redwoods and all those kind of um typical places and then um the second time it was like fall break 
so like autumn and we had found um this really cheap cruise it was like a seven day cruise around mexico for like 300 dollars a person and before that we'd been considering like a road trip for like a week and it was going to be way more expensive to do a road trip so we're like let's just do this cruise to mexico and so we did that instead it was amazing i'd never been to mexico and we got to go to like three different parts but yeah i think that's I'm trying to think if we did any other travel. Yeah, I feel like you do get to travel, but sometimes you need to, like, you know, be realistic because you can't just, like, go to a new country every weekend kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. We weren't allowed to leave. It all had to be approved through, like, the exchange yeah, company. I remember, like, it was quite a big hassle. You need to get, like, everyone's yeah. permission. Yeah, you had yeah, uh, to apply and, like, fill out all the form with, like, all the dates and where you're going and the contact numbers and everything. So the only times we really went on trips was when it was, like, spring break and um fall break that was really it I think for like long stuff sometimes we did weekend stuff down to like Santa Barbara which is like a six hour drive but still in California oh, yeah. to like visit people but yeah it's hard to find time like people think when you're an exchange student you're just going to be like chilling out and like, but you're in school like pretty much most of the time right yeah and it's hard to get time off and even if you're um like if you're doing sports or any kind of extracurriculars they're always on weekends as well all oh, right yeah so, yeah you barely have any free time or I didn't so yeah (laughs) um cool so like after your exchange um so you came back to New Zealand right Mm -hmm. Um, was it did it feel weird because like I remember coming back and it felt like I had done this like life-changing thing but everyone else was still kind of just doing the same thing was it like the same for you yeah definitely especially because it was um like for my friends it was they'd already been graduated for six months so if they didn't go to uni they were just still at home and then I came back and I'd done this amazing year of travel and I was like such a changed person like you grew so much but then everyone's kind of the same yeah I was like oh I'm so independent now like I felt like so independent I was like I could just go and do anything and then you come back and everyone's like the same it's all the same dramas from high school and it's like yeah it's definitely you can definitely tell that you've grown up and some of your friends haven't yeah so like what did you do did you like did you study or did you work or when I came back um I worked for a little I saved up um some money and then I went to Europe for three months and I did some like backpacking around so yeah I definitely I caught the travel bug and like definitely I'm like I'm gonna travel everywhere now um yeah but yeah so I think I saw that you went back to the US, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been back a few. Oh, sorry. No, go on. <laughs> so, yeah, did you did you have a visa? Because I heard you were, like, working, right? Yeah, so I I went back in the time since I came back from my exchange and then, like, went back on my visa. I'd gone back to visit my host family, oh. I think, three times. In that time, I just just always wanted to go back I got so close with my family that they were just like come stay with us and so I went back a few times and then I studied in Auckland I did a um, screen acting diploma and then once you've studied there's a visa you can get where you can go to America for 12 months and you can work and travel and so that's what I got I found out after I studied Um, that I was able to do it and I was so happy because I'd always thought there was no way to get a visa to work in America and like moving to America is like really hard (laughs) compared to other it's like impossible unless you have blood relatives or like an exceptional talent that they can give your work visa for but yeah if you have just finished study you have to be within a year of finishing your diploma or degree okay then then you can get this visa to go study for a year and not study you can get this visa to go work and travel for a year and so that's what I did I was there for four months before I had to come back because of COVID all right okay yeah but I loved it I got there I was living in LA with my host sister she um was living in LA as well so I was able to see her so much it was amazing we were just hanging out like all the time and um, I was working at this really cute Italian restaurant that was family owned Mm -hmm. been there for like 40 years oh that's so nice everything was amazing and then I had to come back yeah so were you were you a waitress yeah I was a bartender and a waitress okay so okay can you like help me answer this question because like I'm kind of afraid to when I go to the US like when do you 
like how do you know how much to tip like is there just like a flat rate or does it depend yeah. on like well usually um you always tip someone who serves you directly like you wouldn't just tip someone who like you go into a cafe and you like buy a bagel you wouldn't really tip them you can but you don't really need to because they've not really been serving you for very long but mm -hmm. if somebody makes you a coffee or if you're sitting down at a table and they're serving you or if they're providing a service like yeah for appointments or like beauty services or that sort of thing those are the people that you would tip and mm -hmm. usually it's People say between 10 and 20%, but if you tip 10%, that sends a message to the waitress that they're shit and you didn't like their service. If you tip 15, people are still like, oh, okay, that's a bit. Mm. And so generally you want to tip 20% unless they, unless you didn't like them. Yeah. So is, is it like everyone uses cash there or? No, you can, you can tip on cards. So you'll, um, what they do in America is once you've like finished, the waitress will come over and you'll ask for the bill and she will, um, bring you an itemized bill and then you'll look at it and then you hand her your card and she'll take it back and run it and then she'll bring it back to you in like a book and it'll have these receipts and it has the total and then you write in your tip and then you write the new total and you sign it and so then they can like enter it into the system so then that's how you get tips and then at the end of the night the server will like have all her receipts add them all up and then get that cash out of the till oh right okay cool yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just really curious. Um, mm -hmm. so, leave cash there as well. um, how did you, like, how did you find your job? Was it just kind of the same thing? Like, here, you just apply to different places. Yeah, I just applied online with, like, Indeed, I think, and Seek. Those are the two sites I used, I think. Oh, right, cool. Yeah. cool. Um, well, that's pretty much it. I guess just to wrap up, like, do you have any final advice for exchange students or people that are wanting to go to, like, the US specifically? Um, I would say definitely do a ton of research because there's like a lot of stuff that I found out like along the way from mm -hmm. myself, my experience or friends of mine that um, if you do a lot of research, it is so much easier. Things like um, I recommend going through a company who doesn't pay the host families because if the host families get paid, uh, yeah. some of them just are in it for the money and don't give a shit about you. So if you're going with one who doesn't get paid, you know that they really want you there. Yeah, because um, they're not getting any money, so they... Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, what else did I say? Do you have anything, like, that you would say that you should bring to America or that you shouldn't bring? Um, I would say prescriptions. Bring enough for the whole year because like, it's... If you have to go to the doctor in America, it's, like, 200 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I can't even, I'm not even sure how... What the medical insurance you get covers because I never went to the doctor or anything. But I know that when I was on my work visa, it's really hard to get prescriptions for just everyday stuff. Um, my insurance didn't cover prescriptions for stuff like birth control and just like regular stuff like that. You had to pay for it yourself and then it's like 50 bucks a month. So what I did was I went to my doctor and I asked for a six month or 12, 12 yeah. months. Supply. Yeah, so definitely do that with medications because the US is really bad for yeah, medical. Yeah, like <laughs> not the greatest things. Um, yeah. So yeah, anything else that I brought. I don't think there was anything. Um, everything else is really cheap in America. You don't even really need oh, to bring yeah, many true. clothes or like makeup or anything. Yeah. America's like the shopping central. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Well, that's pretty much it. Um, thanks so much for your time and joining me. Um, I'll link like all your like YouTube and like Instagram as well. Eh? Um. So yeah, it's just I'm Deanna Haley. My last, I just put up a video about being an exchange student so if you want any more information about yeah, America I don't think anyone's going to be going like anytime soon but yeah <laughs> it'll be helpful so yeah that's pretty much it okay so yeah <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> so that is it guys thank you so much for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to check out Deanna's channel um, I'll leave all her links in the description and I'll see you guys in my next one